including those of the First Nations. And then finally, you may have noticed that 
The place where we used to have prayer grounds here at St. Paul for the smaller children, we now have activity packets and, and, and kids here on either side of the sanctuary and would encourage kids to, you know, to keep them busy, keep them happy and excited and things that they can still worship, but also do something with their hands while they're doing that. So those are available for anyone. They're available for adults. <laughs> With that, we ask that the congregation rise for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips. But have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace and time of need. And turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. <laughs>
Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or friends for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Please be seated. Can I have our young people come up in the front row for the words of worship? Okay, let's review. What are the two highlights of worship? Something right this time, guys. Yes. What? Communion and gospel. We're going to say the same thing, Lenny? Okay, communion and gospel. Okay. Right. When we say the highlights, that means those are very, very important. So when you're standing up and the gospel is being read, you probably don't want your back turned to the person reading the gospel, right? Okay, I don't know anyone that would ever do something like that, but I just wanted to make sure that we know that those are everything in worship leads up to those two moments. So, gospel is what we're going to talk about today. And do you know what the word gospel means? Renee. It's the teaching, that, that, is, that is definitely a part of the definition. But what, what do you think the word gospel means? Like, what would be the translation? Because it's not a, a word that we use all the time in everyday life. Gospel means good news. Good news. So we want to hear good news, right? We want to hear good news. And sometimes when the gospel, the reading that is read up there, the, the last of the readings that is read, sometimes it's pretty obvious to tell that's good news. Like when Jesus heals someone, that's good news, right? Right? When Jesus rose from the dead and died for our sins, that's good news, even though the dying part is hard, but rose from the dead, that seems good news. But there's other times when the reading of the gospel, we know it's supposed to be good news, but it's kind of tricky. It doesn't really seem like good news. And we don't realize that it's good news until we really, really think about it. And today's gospel is one of those examples, okay? Jesus asks a man to give up something that's very important to him. And that important thing was money to him. He couldn't do that. So I want to ask you, what is important to you? What is something that's really, really important to you? Can we, can we just go right down the aisle? Lene, your cat and your parents in that order? <laughs> <laughs> your parents and your cat. What about you guys? What's important to you? Your cats? Your cats? Your, your stuffed 
Samuel Howell. Good dog. What's some more tea? Family. Potatoes! <laughs> the first food makes its appearance. Your dog potato? Oh, it's my food potato. Oh. What, is house potatoes? Is that what you're saying? Is that what dog? Alright, and he's shaped like a He's shaped like a potato. And what's some more tea? Family and friends. Okay. Now, if Jesus came up to you and asked you to give up that one thing that is most important to you, would you be able to do it? If he said, I want you to give this up to follow me. Is there anyone out of the things that you listed that you could give that up? If Jesus came up to you and asked you to give it up, would you be able to? Right? You're, you're, you're a little bit? What was the one? What was your important? Your dog? So you might be able to give up your dog to follow Jesus. It would be hard though, right? Right. But when Jesus asks this question, he knows it's a hard thing to do. Right? And I don't think he's going to have us ask, he's not going to ask us to give up our family. He's not going to ask you to give up your dog. He's not going to ask you to give up your stuffed animal, okay, or your pets, right? But it's for something for us to think about that what's the most important thing in our, in our world, in our life? What should we got, right? And sometimes we're going to ask to give up something that we don't really want to give up because we like them. And we hear that in the story today. Jesus says that the most important thing is God. And sometimes following God means making these sacrifices. Hopefully you don't have to make a big, big sacrifice like giving up anything that you listed today. But something to think about, okay? All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the, the gift of worship. We thank you for the gospel, for Holy Communion, and for the gathering of all your people. Help us to remember that sometimes to follow you we need to sacrifice. And we pray that it won't be something that would really cause us harm. We know that you wouldn't do that and that we would have to give up people that we love. But we have to think that sometimes we have to make sacrifices and we have to make difficult decisions for your sake. Let's realize that ultimately this is for the good news of the gospel that you give us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Today's gospel um, gives us the story of uh, a rich young man who asks a question that many of us have wondered at some point or another. He says, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What do I need to do to make sure I get into heaven? And the answer Jesus gives is, is not an answer that any of us want to hear. He looks at the man and he says, go sell all of your possessions all of your possessions. Give the money to the poor and then come and follow me. The text says that the man went away grieving and filled with sorrow because he had many, many possessions and he did not want to give them. But here's the kicker. At that moment, Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, oh my friends, how difficult it is for someone with money to the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Whew. Now I have to admit to you that there was a time in my life where I really loved this particular verse, but for all the wrong reasons. When I was in college, I worked for a lobbyist group called the Illinois Public Action Council. And we were trying to fight rising utility rates in the state of Illinois, which is a worthy cause. But uh, in my youthful zeal, I could say that I thought I had a secret weapon that would help people donate to our cause. And that secret weapon was guilt. And I was pretty good at guilting people. <laughs> so one, one afternoon, we were in a well-to-do neighborhood. And I went and I found the biggest house that I could find in that neighborhood. Like the person had the most resources. And we knocked on, I knocked on the door, and an elderly gentleman came out of this huge mansion of a house. After a while, I realized that he lived there alone, and he was a widower. 
And so he let me give my spiel. I told him who we were, what we were doing, and I asked for a donation, to which he politely declined, just as he was starting to close the door. He said, sir, are you a man of faith? And he opened the door a little bit. He said, well, yes, I am. I'm a proud Presbyterian. I said, are you familiar with Mark 10, 25? Now, at this point, about it's the only verse in the Bible I had memorized. And he said, no, and I don't think I know that verse. He said, well, it says how difficult it is for a rich person to enter heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich person to enter heaven. And as soon as the words came out of my lips, I could tell that the weight of this passage really hit him hard. He turned around, he went back into his house, he brought out a checkbook, and he wrote a sizable donation to our organization. But <laughs> looking back on it, I realized that I completely missed the point of what Jesus was saying. I wasn't interested in helping this elderly gentleman at all. I wasn't in, in inviting him to a closer relationship with God or anything like that. I was simply using Jesus' words to manipulate him to guilt him into giving money to us. And, and, and for what? I mean, so that we could have a little more money for our cause, which, while it was a noble cause, it had very little to do with the kingdom of God. You see, Jesus didn't give us this teaching to guilt anyone into giving anything. This challenge to the, the young man was not about financial transactions or moral superiority is about freedom. The freedom from those things that bind us, whether that's money or anything else. You see, wealth has a way. The kind of wealth that this elderly gentleman had that I encountered that day. Wealth has a way of binding us. Not because money itself is evil, but because money has a sneaky way of making us feel like we're in control. And we're not. It gives us this false sense of security. We say to ourselves, well, you know, I, I don't need God. I can just go to the store and buy whatever I need to help myself. But Jesus isn't interested in our false securities. Jesus is interested in our hearts. Back in my college days, what I failed to understand, and what the rich young man in the story missed, was that Jesus wasn't saying that wealth is evil. He was inviting the young man into something that was far richer than money. He was inviting him into a life of generosity, of trust, and freedom, and encouraging him to let go of those things that were holding him back things that were preventing him from stepping into the fullness of life that God offers for each one of us. And it's easy for us to look at this passage and say to ourselves, well, this isn't really talking about me because I'm not rich. But the truth is, you're richer than you think. And every single one of us is holding on to something or multiple things too tightly. And whether that is money, control, fear, or resentment towards someone else? Or maybe it's the thought that I already have things figured out and I've done my part. Whatever it is, Jesus says to you today, what is holding you back? What do you need to let go of to fully follow me? And even though this seems like a very harsh passage, right? There is a happy ending. You can't really see it unless you really pay attention. But it doesn't end with sorrow and grief. When the disciples hear that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God, they say, well, then who can be saved? Teacher, who can be saved? If it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle, what are we supposed to do? And then Jesus said, well, with humans, it's impossible but not with God. All things are possible with God. So as Jesus is talking about heaven here, uh, Jesus isn't saying that 
You have to be perfect to get in. He's simply saying you don't have to do it alone. And, and each one of us that's here today, every single person is the rich young man in this story. We're all holding on to things too much. And Jesus isn't using guilt to get us to let go of it. He's doing everything out of love. Because God's grace is big enough to see us through, no matter how impossible it may feel. Amen.
God of grace, receive our prayer. Sustaining God, as we approach the harvest time, we pray for farmers, field workers, and those who process crops. Keep us mindful of environmental threats to the nourishing food that feeds the world. God of grace, receive our prayer. Steadfast God, inspire world leaders and those seeking leadership roles to share resources and work collectively to end global poverty, starvation, and preventable disease. Direct us to seek justice and equity that all may live in peace. God of grace, receive our prayer. Generous God, we give thanks for the First Nations and tribes who inhabited this land. We lament the harm done by colonization. Call us to deeper appreciation and care for the languages, rituals, and history of all indigenous people. God of grace, receive our prayer. God of compassion, the devastation of the recent hurricanes is overwhelming and seen beyond our comprehension. We pray for all those affected. Comfort them, bring restoration to the devastation. Protect all those working in affected areas to bring supplies and healing. God of grace, receive our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted, tormented, oppressed, and lonely. During this Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we pray for ears to hear those hurting and for hearts to move with compassion towards them and to stand with them. God of grace, receive our prayer. God of healing, we pray for caregivers and for those struggling with illness. Wrap your arms of strength, love, and healing around all who need it today. We pray especially for Beth, Paul, Lois, Martin, Carolyn, Chris, Terry, Nay, Sue, Carol, Kim, and all those we name out loud and silently in our hearts. God of grace, receive our prayer. Ever living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for saints of all times and places, first and last, who still inspire us to faithful living. We pray for the families and friends of Dwight Nielsen, Ron Mertzloff, Richard Blum, Thomas Walters, Louis Marinelli, Marilyn Goodrich, and Donald Schindler. May they feel your presence in the midst of their grief. God of grace, receive our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that
of creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Come. Oh. 
Now may the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you all and keep you in God's grace. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and, and fed us with a dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Time for some announcements. <coughs> the first thing that I just want to mention is that immediately following the service, there will be coffee with council downstairs. So, um, all things like stewardship and budget concerns that you have, that is what this time is for. So please join us downstairs in the fellowship right underneath our feet right now in the sanctuary for the Coffee Council. Also, all of the things, Sunday School, Youth Hour, will all be taking place as well in their regularly appointed spaces. I also wanted to encourage people to sign up, if you haven't signed up, for our picture directory, which will be this Friday and Saturday. So we still have some spaces left, and we're trying to get as many people uh, in the congregation to sign up. Yes, Terry's holding it up. So look back there, and it's a wonderful clipboard. Right here. Yeah, <laughs> we, we de desperately need more people to sign up for it, uh, because it's coming up Friday and Saturday. There's all kinds of times that are available. Um, so please sign up for that. Also wanted to let you know that there is uh, Urgent needs for PADS, one of our ministry partners. Items are listed in the bulletin, but they're put in the red box in the narthex or outside of the office during the week. This drive is running through all of October. Um, also, you can submit your own photos. Uh, that is, Diana gave me a wonderful announcement. <laughs> but as, as far as uh, the picture directory, you can submit your own photos later on if there's some reason why you can't make it to uh, our picture directory. But also, there will be other times and places where you can um, sign up, but we're really trying to get as many people in our congregation as possible to sign up for these this Friday and Saturday. So please, please sign up for that picture directory. Um, but again, that is the PADS announcement that they have a desperate need for these items and they're listed in your bulletin and also leave it. So you can drop them off in the red box or in the narthex where you can you the red box. Um, I believe that is all the announcements. So is there any other announcement? What? Children boxes. I already said that. The really part of the service? Yeah. Where were you? Okay. <laughs> All right, congregation, please rise. Thank you. God of Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace.